Okay, hello everybody. My name is Claire Pope and I'm the Marketing Director at Oaklands College. Firstly, I wanted to thank you all for joining our webinar today about Oaklands and the opportunities available for you. Last week we should have held our open days, but due to the current circumstances, this was not possible. However, we, we really wanted to offer you the next best thing, which is this webinar today, and it gives you the chance to see some of our facilities, find out more about the courses, meet some of our tutors and find out a little bit more about college life. So here today we have Anissa, our head of department, members of the curriculum and um, available for a Q&A session at the end and also some of our student support team. If you have any questions in the webinar, could you please use the chat functionality, which is the little speech bubble um, and the team will answer and we can also take questions in the Q&A after the webinar. Can I ask that everyone's videos are switched off please and the audio is set for mute um, for the webinar. Um, we don't want to keep you too long, so we're only going to run for about 30 minutes but I want to let you know that we'll also be recording this session and we'll post you the link afterwards. It'll be available on the website and also we'll send via email. We also want to send you some of our video links of our virtual tours and facilities um, so you can look at those in your own time. Now we understand these are really difficult times for you and want to assure you that Oaklands College are here to support you on the next stage of your education journey. On behalf of the college, I'd really like to also thank the NHS and key workers for all their amazing support and work throughout the coronavirus. So I'm now going to pass you over to Anissa, who will tell you a little bit more about the curriculum and introduce some of the staff. Anissa. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Claire. My name is Anissa Kiani. I'm head of department for land based industries, which includes equine, animal care, agriculture and horticulture. So through this virtual experience, we'll be able to get you to, to speak to some of our industry specialist staff to talk a little bit more about the courses. And as Claire mentioned before, if there's anything you feel like we haven't covered, please do use the chat functionality for us to be able to answer in Q&A. So here we go. So a bit about Oakland's College in general. We have award winning facilities set within acres of wild and open countryside. In our land based industry area, our facilities we have is Equestrian Centre. Our Equine Centre is located at our St Albans campus. Our Habitat Centre, I can proudly say we have a zoo licence, functional, fully functional small zoo with exotic animals ranging from meerkats to iguanas. That picture that you can see there is Tank, our um, tortoise, and he is actually 53 years old and has been for, with the college for a very long time. We have an on-site working farm, which is managed by our farm resource manager and as a farm hand. Over 500 acres of farmland, including arable, grassland and, working, and, and a working farm. We also have a glass house and polytunnels, and you'll get to learn a lot about the exotic plants that our horticulture students uh, learn in terms of planting and their production and preparation. What qualification is right for you? We, we offer a range of courses from entry level all the way up to level three. And we also offer support and guidance for you to then progress on to level four and level five and into higher education or straight into employment. For each level, there is an entry requirement. However, if you are offered a course, say whether that it's level two or level one, you will have the opportunity in the first six weeks to via our six point assessment uh, plan to see if it's the right course for you. That, the first first six weeks are very crucial because it's an opportunity for your assessors and for us to be able to see that you have got the skills gap, uh, knowledge and you are able to work at that level. Based on your student review board one, we will then take a decision to see whether you are at the right level or whether you need to move up a level or down a level. So the first course we're going to be talking about is animal care. And in order for me to talk a little bit more about this, I'm going to ask my colleagues, James Caldwell, to support me and talk a little bit about the animal care department. So James, could you please join in? Yep. Hello there, my name's James. So as I said before, we offer a range of courses uh, on the animal care uh, qualification. We start at entry three and go up to level one, level two, and then finally level three, which is a two year course. Uh, the way the courses are structured, it's, it's like a stepping stone pathway. So you can come in with <laughs> with no quals and develop or if you've got your GCSEs for example in English maths you could come in at level two or three so there is something for everybody uh, the, the the way we approach it is uh, we've got a lovely range of topics that that cater for everybody's interest so we've got our general uh, subjects such as animal health animal accommodation 
but we also cater for more specialist ones like exotic animals, uh, aquatics. Uh, we have three 2,000 litre fish tanks that, that uh, you know, you can make use of if you've got those niche interests. And we also do some wider uh, work around campus, such as fencing and repair jobs, things like that. So we do have the resources and the animals to cater for everybody. In addition to that, you will also have a weekly practical slot. So you get hands-on experience with a range of animals from hamsters and uh, gerbils, small animals, rabbits, guinea pigs, to more exotic stuff like tarantulas, scorpions, and we've got some large constrictor snakes as well. So we've got a lovely range of species there for you to develop. Um, oh, now I'd like, like now to invite our lecturer, um, Michael Collins, to give us a little bit more information about the practical unit development that you'll be doing on the animal care course. Hi, my name is Mike Collins. I teach across the levels at Oaklands. Uh, the unit that James has touched on then, the practical unit development, is what we know as our PUD unit. Um, typically, we have one session a week, um, and as James stated, it does go across a whole different range of different species. Now, each different level, depending on what level you enter the college, can work with different animals. Um, and our goal is to get you the skills and qualifications you need to take the practical and the theory into the industry. Um, you're all interested in animal care. If you are applying for animal care, you do know that it's a very practical based industry. Um, the sort of skills it will teach you are feeding, habitation, restraining, all the vital important skills which are across all the industry standards really. Um, if you are scared of any animals, um, it's absolutely fine. We're not going to make people who are terrified of spiders hold spiders, but we will set you goals to see if we can help you get over that fear. Because at the end of the day, if you can tick those fears off your box, you're more employable. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Michael. I would now like to invite uh, Michael Stewart. So this is another Michael and he is our coordinator for agriculture to talk a little bit about the agriculture courses. Hello there and welcome. My name is Michael. Um, so in agriculture, we offer a pathway starting from level one, where you will learn the basics of operating and working as part of a working farm. Onwards from there, we then offer the level two diploma, which is geared towards arming you with the vital skills to gain employment in the industry such as lambing duties and also managing our arable crop section and learning how to drive a tractor. Michael, would you like to tell us a little bit about the lambing weekend and what the students do on there? Yep, so once a year we, we do our lambing period and during that time we, uh, Oaklands College throws a massive event called Lambing Weekend and the students, um, they, they are requested to uh, be there for the two day event. And as well as that, you'll be doing the two months leading up to that, um, staying overnight on the, on the farm, getting hands on experience, working with the lambs. The Lama Weekend is not is just- the one about the animal management. management. Uh, yeah, the Lamu Weekend is not just there for, um, the just for the weekend. agriculture student, it's also open to animal care students and horticulture students and even our catering students. The event is really massive and we have a foot floor, I believe, of 5,000 people that usually attend this event, a rather successful event. I would like to now pass you on to our equine coordinator, Amanda Starkins, to talk a little bit about the equine department. Hello there, my name is Amanda Starkins. Um, I'm the coordinator in equine. Um, we run three programmes currently in equine at Oaklands, one of which is our level one introductory diploma. We then have a level two diploma in horse care and we have recently written a level three apprenticeship in equine studies as a senior group. Um, within the studies and all of our programmes within equine at Oaklands College, you benefit from um, a variety of practical skills using our extensive resources and also development of your theoretical knowledge within our classroom based lectures. Um, we have extensive resources here at the college, including stabling for 32 horses, solarium, horse walker, indoor and outdoor arenas and a full set of show jumps. All of these resources are utilised by the students for the development of their skills in a variety of different areas. Um, we also have yard duties within our programmes across all levels and this is um, in correlation with your work experience. So what we require is for you to complete morning and weekend yard duties where you'll be working with our grooms on the college yard to develop your skills in a commercial equestrian setting. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Amanda. I would like to, like now to pass you on to our coordinator for horticulture, which is Michael. If you could come back and speak to us about the horticulture department.
Michael? I didn't have my mic on. I do apologise. <laughs> no I'll reintroduce myself. I'm Michael. I am the coordinator for Horticulture. Um, we offer two pathways. We have a lower skill level pathway, which starts at entry two, working its way to entry three, to level one, to level two practical skills. And then we also offer another pathway, which is the higher level pathway, and that starts at level one diploma to level two diploma, working up to level three. Um, we offer a wide range of courses that cater for all levels, skills and age, and age is irrelevant. My oldest student was 67 years old. We embrace diversity, and this can be seen by the range of our students to come to us. In horticulture, with the rise in demand of the amount of houses being built, we need 60,000 horticulturists within the next 10 years to meet the supply and demand. Michael, would you like to add a little bit about the practical lessons uh, that the students would be taking part, especially in terms of the competitions with the pumpkin patch? Yes, of course. So in, in horticulture, we learn everything from, from soil to plant science, how to maintain and operate machinery used in the industry. And with today's swift raise in technology, we gear our, our courses towards getting you ready for the industry. As well as this, we do cross curriculum activities where we grow giant pumpkins up to three to four hundred pounds. And then we we then hand them over to the catering department who cook them and then we go out and feed the homeless people. So it's very rewarding as well as you guys gain a hands on experience. Thank you, Michael. So also just to let you know that all students studying courses in animal management, equine, horticulture and agriculture are required to wear a uniform to college for September 2020. The wearing of a uniform helps towards safeguarding and prepare students for working environments within the associated industries. This uniform can be purchased through the ARCA website and is very competitively priced. Once you receive an enrolment letter, you will be given instructions on how to register and order online directly from ARCO. Please note that items should be ordered as soon as possible prior to starting the, your course. However, if you need further guidance on this, this is something that we can give you information on a step by step user guide, which you would receive either via email or a letter of how to register and how to order. I do believe ARCO will be there on our enrollment day, depending on when that is and given the circumstances that is health, that it meets the health and safety requirements. That is something that we will let you know in the future if they are going to be there on the enrolment day. So what is a study programme? So most of you that will be joining us will be coming onto a study programme, a nationally recognised qualification in the subject of your choice. So whether that's equine, animal care, agriculture or hort. Most of you will be required to also take part with your maths and English skills. So if you haven't already got your grade three and above, in your maths and English, you will be having to retake your maths and English, either function skills or GCSE. You would also be developing an empl your employability and work experience sk uh, skills. This is something that every student will need to complete between 20 to 40 hours of work experience. In addition to this, all land based industry qualifications will require an additional amount of work experience that you would have to complete within the in within the sector. I will invite my colleagues in a short while to talk a little bit more about this because different courses will require different amounts, but you will get that information in your course handbook. You will also be developing your personal development skills. So you'll be working on things like healthy lifestyle, staying safe online. I would like now to invite Kevin Heron to talk a little bit about what the personal tutor role is and what that support will look like for you. Okay, so hi everybody. So my name is Kevin. I'm an advanced practitioner within Equine. So the PDR session, it's um, called Personal Development Review. And this is how we as a college and a department can really support you on your time on the course. You'll cover everything from mandatory units, which could be from prevent British values right the way through to safeguarding. But also, depending on the level of the course that you're on, you'll do optional units, time management, study skills, doing personal statements for UCAS. But a really vital part of your PDR sessions is you'll have terminally one to one reviews with your personal tutor. And this is a real good opportunity to be able to discuss how you're getting on, the grades that you're able to achieve, all the strengths, all the amazing things that you're doing in college. 
but also maybe any additional learning support that you might need to ensure that you're equipped and we can equip you with the skills so you can achieve the course and the qualification that you want to achieve so ultimately you can reach your potential and that's how you will do your PDR sessions. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kevin. So how uh, the course works, OK? Um, uh, so the sh lesson styles are tutor-led presentations. These, these could be group or individual activities and can be between theory and practical sessions. The kind of support you'll get from your tutors is with regards to the information, resources, assignment briefs and structure advice. I would like to now invite Michael Collins to come back and speak a little bit in terms of how we do this in our department. So, Michael, over to you. Hello, thanks again. Um, so one of the main resources that we actually use at Oaklands, which has been really useful during this time, is a programme called Canvas. This allows us to put all of our work up onto the internet. Uh, so if you turn up to a lecture and you want to revisit that lecture, you can at any time. All students are given login details and shown how to use Canvas throughout the year. Uh, we can put assignments up there and actually that's how we do assignments and we ask you to submit them via Canvas as well. We have an assessment timetable up there so you can manage your time really carefully and make sure you're on top of everything. And it's a really good way that if you do miss a class because you're sick, you can catch up yourself without having to feel disadvantaged from the other people who managed to attend that lesson. Thanks, Doc. thank you, Michael. So we offer student support at uh, Auckland's College, so all students will have a personal tutor. So a little bit about well, how Kevin spoke about the one to one targets and making sure that you're on track. You'll have regular monitoring of progress and performance, which you'll be able to track via Pro Portal. If you're under 18, your parents can ac access this information as well through Parent Portal. We have student advisors who will provide welfare and support and advice on financial support for those who need it. And they'll be in regular contact for those students that we feel are at risk or are vulnerable and needing that level of support. I don't know whether we have anyone from student support today, but they will be here available at the end for you to have any further questions uh, with regards to student support available at Oaklands. So work experience. Work experience at Oaklands College has a team of dedicated employability mentors who helped uh, students achieve valuable and relevant work placements. We are very fortunate in the land based industry department that we have a subject specialist learning work placement officer that works very closely with our coordinators to make sure all students get relevant and external work experience, making sure that that develops their uh, their working practice skills. I would like now to invite uh, Iris Fleming to talk a little bit about what work experience means in animal care. Hello, my name's Iris, uh, one of the level three uh, tutors. Um, having worked at Oaklands College for many years and seen the land-based industry uh, flourish, um, and also more importantly, see our students going into successful um, work uh, at the end of their courses. We have many links with the industry ranging from the more practical aspect to the uh, veterinary side. So we're looking at uh, potentially working in rehoming centres, working in grooming parlours um, <clears throat> and uh, veterinary practices, um, even on, on to the other end of the uh, scale, moving into higher education. Work experience is so important. Um, students going on to higher education, you know, are going to come out with, with qualifications, but uh, the same qualification, but that work experience is so vital for getting a, a job within the industry. I cannot um, say how important getting those skills, uh, whatever level you want to go in at, whether, as I say, if you want to go practically or want to go into more the sort of veterinary line, um, I cannot uh, say how important they are. Uh, we have many links. Um, we have a database uh, which we've um, put together over the many years so we can help support students get a work experience placement. And for many of them, it has led to jobs. It has led to part time jobs where they're completing their um, college course. So not guaranteed, of course, but uh, once the work placement providers see that you're reliable, uh, how hard you work, you know, they, they are generally willing to consider you for any any positions that come up. Um, as I say, it's not guaranteed, uh, but, you know, that's down to you. You know, if you if you um, when you do your work experience, if you follow the guidelines that are given to you by your tutors um, and you attend and you are uh, punctual, uh, etc., then at the end of the day, finishing your course, potentially you're a more employable person. Thanks, Dr. Thank you, Iris. So students do take part in annual lamas season at Oaklands College. As X-Made area, our students will get 
many, many opportunities to work across uh, the department. So if you're an animal care student, you may have the opportunity to work with the agriculture students. If you're a horticulture student, you may have the opportunity to work with catering students. So interdisciplinary activities is something we really, really push uh, in our department because we want our students to be able to have those diverse skills and those um, in terms of to make them more employable and uh, to give them a more sort of uh, a breadth of knowledge in a wider skill set. Some of our student success stories. Again, I would like to invite back Iris to speak to us about some of our um, successful students on the kind of progress routes that they took and what they did in, and what they're doing, what they are doing now. So, Iris, if I can invite you back. Hi. Uh, yes, yeah, student success. Um, students may come in at uh, level one, level two, um, with maybe being at school maybe wasn't the best place for them, but coming into to, uh, college with an environment that they want to work in, um, uh, have, have seen them flourish again and uh, move successfully to uh, different levels of education. Uh, students here have come in um, at level two, uh, done the one year course successfully, moved on to level three, um, again, a two year course and then moved on into higher education, which is something they may not have been able to achieve had they stayed at school um, and continue with their A-levels. So going down the vocational route um, still can lead you to that higher education that you may not think at this point of school is achievable for you. Thanks. Rob. Thank you, Iris. I'd just like to add on that note that again, uh, just it's not just your vocational skills. We will be developing skills like digital literacy, teaching you about the importance of the use of social media. There's a lot of wider skills that you will be developing as being as part of a student at Oakland's College. I would now like to pass you back to Claire Polk, who would like to take you through the steps of starting at Oakland's College. Thank you, Anissa. So you can apply for a course via our website, which is oaklands.ac.uk. And if you need to talk to anyone about a course, you can either email info at oaklands.ac.uk or you can use our live chat functionality on the website. Um, as Anissa mentioned, you can apply for as many courses as you like at this stage. And once you've applied, our admissions team will review the, your application and then be in contact by email about a place. So please make sure you check your inbox regularly. Now we understand at this time it's very difficult with grades and we also understand you'll be collecting your results from school on the normal results day in August, which is in line with government guidelines. We will be contacting you um, regarding enrolment nearer the time once we've been made aware by the government of the next steps, but really keen to ensure you that we will keep you informed by email um, of anything that is going to happen. Now once you're enrolled on your course, you'll begin in September and then we welcome you to Oakland's College. Now, just to keep you updated and um, with college news, please make sure you visit our website regularly and also follow us on our um, social media channels. So we're on um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and recently TikTok as well. And don't forget to just visit the website to apply for your course and just remember to keep an eye on that inbox for the video links which you'll send afterwards as well. So I can see why this has been going on the webinar. We've had lots of great questions popping up in the meeting chat. So I'm going to pass you back to Anissa and her team now, who will be glad to answer those. So over to you, Anissa. OK. OK, so good. Now I'll just roll up because there's lots of questions there. Um, I do apologise. Hey, uh, hi, I'm worried about my grades and I'm not sure what will happen due to coronavirus. How do I know what level I can apply for? I want to study. Hang on, I can't see more. Uh, I want to study level three animal management. I would like to pass that question to James Cordwell, please. OK, thanks, Lisa. Hi, Holly. Uh, try not to worry about your grades. You know, everyone's in the same position here. It's it's a weird situation for all of us. So I appreciate that you're a bit stressed, but don't worry about it. As Claire said, the grades will be released uh, late August. So, you know, you can still apply and we'll just see how your grades come out. Now, if let's just say some reason you don't quite make it because at the level three, it is a very demanding course. It's a lot of work and we, we need to make sure that students are coming in uh, ready to cope, essentially. So minimum grades are grade four in English, math and science, because as I say, it's a, it's a tricky course and you really don't want to be doing level three and juggling an additional English or maths course as well. So. The options could be you could come in and start at level two, potentially progress through that, maybe. 
develop your experience, develop your skills, and then the following year we could jump you up to the level three. So that's one option. Uh, but as I said earlier, we do have a course for all experiences and there are a range of levels. So, you know, we can figure something out for you. But at this stage, hang fire till your grades are released. Because, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure the schools are working through to try and do predictions. So, but we can find something for you. I hope that helps. Also, I'd just like to add is like I mentioned in previously, we, you would have your six point assessment plan. So coming in the first six weeks, we will be working very closely into assessing uh, so this was given whether you had your whether you had your GCSE grades or not. This is a system that we've developed at Oakland's College to make sure we've got the right learners and the right course. So that six weeks is a measuring tool for us to make sure that we have got students that ha have got the academic skills and theory knowledge uh, to be able to be able to cope with that uh, level of requirement. So that's something that we'll be looking at internally as well. So don't don't stress just on your predicted grades. Um, so Rosie. Um, again, hi, I'm worried about my course because I'm wanting to do level two. However, uh, I do have my GCSEs and I could have my A-levels, but I'm not sure what level to apply for, what would benefit, uh, what would be better. So, uh, Rosie, you could if you do apply, you could request for uh, uh, our virtual interview experience, and that will be a great opportunity for some of our lecturers to speak to you directly, to guide you. Based on that interview, they can sort of make a prejudgment as to what level would be better for you. But like I mentioned before, and James has mentioned as well, those first six on when you come onto the course or whether you enroll onto level two or level three based on your entry requirements, we will look at that very carefully. So if we feel like that level two is too low for you and you're exceeding, we'll push you up to level three. However, if you're on level three and we feel like you're not coping, we'll push you back onto level two, making sure that we make the right choice for you. OK, so a question is uh, we have a question from a student regarding equine studies. But I, I can't see the question. Uh, how many hours is riding involved in the course? Can I pass that over to Amanda, please? Yeah, hi there. Um, so there is approximately 45 minutes of riding per week. So that involves one lesson a week of riding. That's both on the level one and the level two course. Um, we do have some provisions with that. You do get assessed on your riding ability within the first six weeks of the programme. For level one, there are no riding standards to adhere to because it's not an assessed unit. Um, if you're applying for level two, there is a minimum riding standard required, um, and that is that you can walk, trot and canter in balance and safely. Um, providing that's OK, we also have a weight limit of 12 and a half stone. Um, and then riding lessons take place once a week for their one and a half hour slots, but the actual riding time will be about 45 minutes. OK, thank you, Amanda. So we have another question. We've had um, a question regarding equipment. Do we need to buy our own equipment? So I did mention uniform and the uniform for each course uh, has the right uh, if there is an equipment. So, for example, the equine course, you would need to be able to get uh, the riding boots and the riding hat. So depending on the course, each course will have a list of uh, um, correct uniform and equipment that you need that is part of that parcel so that is part of uh, the package that you will receive on your enrollment letter so um okay oh good okay so no. next question is this relevant to people who are co come in animal management but at another college um, Isabella, are you currently studying at another college or are you uh, wanting to? I think Isabella has left the conversation. Oh, OK, no worries. OK, um, can I do a level two animal care with my GCSE and then go on to a level three? Um, I'll pass that question on to Iris. Um, you might want to turn your mic on, Iris. It's uh, would I be able to do a level two animal care with my GCSEs and then go on to the level three? Right. Hello. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, depending on well, it's, it's unknown quantity at the moment, clearly with what's going on um, around the country. Um, if you go on to a level two and you're successful on the level two programme, if you take that first, sometimes we do ask or we do suggest that it may be depending on your skills and your experience with animals, that even if you have the uh, the appropriate grades for level three, that level two may be the first, the best programme to start with the one year programme to build those underpinning knowledge and those skills and uh, to then progress on to the level three program. Uh, having those GCSE grades doesn't mean that you have to do those that level three program. Um, if, if you feel comfortable doing a level two, 
and are successful on that level two program um, from your tutor uh, saying that you were attendance and you know handing in work etc then it is a possibility and it, it, you can move on to that level three program um, it depends on on your choice um, your tutor's advice um, and what really you want out of that level three program so a question for Sophie, and this is for Amanda. Would I be able to go to uni with the level two equine management as yours doesn't currently run, uh, have the level three management course? Um, so so no is the short answer to that um, from, a, from a level two qualification. So you wouldn't um, enable you to get the adequate amount of UCAS points. However, we do have a progression from our level two to a level three apprenticeship, which is, um, you know, it's it's still a level three, it's equivalent to a level three diploma. So that would then get you um, suitable um, entry requirements into into university. So next question from Jamie, how do we access the uniform shop? I'd like to pass that question over to Karen. Is Karen still with us? OK, maybe not. Uh, I can answer that with regards to our, uh, the uniform shop. It's online and it's all set up online. So we will give you step by step uh, guidance of how to register with the company and how to order that. They've already got the equipment that you need all set up. You would be given a code and with that code, you'll be able to access all the equipment that you need. However, you would get that step by step guide once you get your enrollment offer. So don't worry, we will support you through with regards to getting your uniform. OK, so next question is how many days of the week of the animal management level three course? So I can answer that question. Uh, you will be doing definitely a minimum of three, if not four days at college. That includes uh, your vocational course, your study program and uh, any internal work experience. And also it includes your directed and e-learning. Uh, so a minimum of at least three days uh, at least. Um, so we've had a question for a student. What companies do horticulture work with? So I'll pass that question over to Michael. So Michael Stewart, can you tell us what companies do horticulture students work with? Hello, yes. Um, so we work very closely with um, historical gardens such as Hatfield House and Nebworth House, where we've had students go there to do their WEX experience and they've actually been employed from that. Um, we also are working closely with Knot Cuts, where we're doing a horseshoe garden up the road from the Oaklands College. And also we've recently um, developed a friendship with um, Earthworks, who are currently uh, doing our century garden at the college. OK, thank you, Michael. This is another question for you, actually, Michael. So hello, I'm currently in sixth form with all my GCSE grades already achieved. Do I follow the same process for enrolment in horticulture courses as this year's year 11? Thanks. Sorry, what's the question again? So, hello, I am currently in sixth form uh, with yeah. all of my GCSE grades uh, achieved, already achieved. So I think this is somebody that's doing a sixth form course. Will now like to come and enrol onto the horticulture course. And is it the same process as enrolling for year 11 students? Well, I guess that then depends on what course they're um, enrolling for. So, if they've got already got their GCSEs, um, I would, yeah, I would say that they'd enrol normally, wouldn't they? Yeah. So they'll go straight on to our, depending on your GCSE results, you'll, you'll go on to our range of courses from level one all the way up to level two. Yeah. OK, so. Um, OK, so how many days a week would you attend for level two animal management? I can I can confirm all study program courses. It's a minimum of three days. Um, it's two, three to two and a half days. But I would say three days because not only would you have your vocational hours, you had your practical hours, you'd have your maths and English if you need to retake those. But you will also have uh, on your timetable your directed study and some e-learning as well. I think that is all for the questions. Is there anyone else that would like to ask anything else? And as Claire mentioned earlier, if there is any other questions that you would like to ask, please make sure you just leave it onto this chat. They will uh, pass it on to our department. And oh, uh, thank you, Jamie. Thank you for joining in. And um, if there's any questions that we haven't answered or you feel like you didn't have the opportunity to ask, please send them through. Marketing will put one of our team members in touch with you to, to take you through the process or answer any queries that you may have. Thanks a lot. Can I just, you. Can I just also say, um, please just keep an eye on your inbox because we will be sending the recording of this afterwards. And also we'll be sending out our virtual tour so you'll be able to see the animals in a lot closer 
um, and also some of our facility videos and meet some of the tutors as well. So on behalf of um, Landbase, thank you all very much for coming today. Thank you. Thanks, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.